Today, I would like to go into the deep end of the theological pool and talk about our capacity to do good. Did you know that Lutheran theology has a very different answer to the question about our capacity to do good than, say, our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, or even many other Protestants? Now, before you hit the scroll button, I would like to tease the end of the video by saying that not only does Lutheran theology have a more biblical answer than the others, but it is also an answer that will free you from the burden of guilt and keep you safely out of the pit of pacifism and not doing anything with your faith. So, here we go. Your conscience tells you what is good and right. You know, lying, stealing, killing, greed, lust, gossip, cheating, manipulation of facts, power plays to get your way, hiding behind words, these and almost a countless list of other behaviors, you know that they're wrong. And when you do them, you rightly feel guilty because you are guilty. And it is not only in doing wrong, but also in not doing good. When you have the means and the ability to help a neighbor, but you don't, that is wrong. Almost every human being agrees with this right and wrong, and, and you, whether you're a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim, atheist, or, or you're nothing at all, most people, regardless of their faith or non-faith, also desire to do the good, or at least what they think for them is good. So, what's the problem with our capacity then to do good? For it's obviously not a lack of knowledge, and most people would say that they try to be good, at least to some degree. Now, I'm giving you a fair warning that what I'm about to say next is where we actually dive into the deep end of the theological pool. But, here we go. While human beings are very capable of doing good for one another, being kind, telling the truth, protecting life and property from harm. When it comes to doing good before God, we have no natural capacity on our own. We are dead to God. And this is where it gets hard to understand when we can obviously do many good things, like we can pray to God, worship Him, serve Him. Are these not good? And I do agree that, yes, these are all good things. But my question is, are you the one doing them? <laughs> you may rightly throw up your hands in exasperation and say, well, well, it didn't happen without me. I'm the one who prayed. And if it wasn't you doing the good, then who was it? Yeah, the deep end of the pool answer is... Jesus. Yes, I know, your hand washes the dirty dishes for the family after supper, but it is Jesus who is in you doing the good, or rather, when you are alive to God in Jesus, it means that your life is hidden in Him, and He gets 100% of the credit for the good while you do 100% of the work. What? Every good and obedient action that you take that is truly good before God is done by Jesus in you. That's what it means to have a life in Him and with Him, even though you are the one doing the actions. So when you don't feel like doing the dishes and you crab at your spouse that you're not doing the dishes tonight and, and you feel quite put out that you always have to do the dishes, who is the one responsible for making family life in that very moment very unpleasant? You. 100% you. And when you and your spouse talk through your feelings and you apologize and, and you forgive each other, who is 100% responsible for the good of reconciliation? Yep, Jesus. Even though you were 100% the one who did the work of confession and, and releasing the sinner from their sin. Confused? 
Well, in Colossians 3, it says that your life is now hidden in Christ with God. And in Hebrews 12, that Jesus is the author and perfecter of your faith. Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We walk in the good. We do the work of the good, but Jesus is 100% the one who does the good through us. And when we don't do the good, then we are 100% responsible for that. So, so we don't get credit for anything except the bad? That question comes to my mind too, and it reveals something quite evil in us that we want need, even demand credit for the good that is done because we would rather justify ourselves to ourselves than live by faith alone in Jesus and that He is 100% our justification before God. No, I want to feel good about myself because I'm doing good, being good, because this system of self-evaluation is under my control. I know that I'm a good person because I do good. Trusting Jesus that I am acceptable and right is out of my control. What a vulnerable, horrible place to live, trusting Jesus that I am acceptable because of Him and not me. But wait, isn't that the Christian faith? Are we not saved by grace through faith? Is not Jesus 100% our justification and 100% our righteousness before God? If you disagree with this statement, then you have left the good news of the gospel of peace and are trusting another gospel, which is no gospel and no good news at all in the end. So when you do good, it is Jesus doing the good in you. And when you do wrong, it is you doing the wrong. Well, another thought comes to mind then. Well, wait, why put any effort into being good at all if Jesus is the one doing all of the good? Then I can just sit back and passively let him do whatever good he wants. Well, here's where that whole system breaks down. Not doing the good, the right, the obedient action is 100% you living as if your life were not hidden in Christ. Colossians 3 reminds us that you died. Your life is hidden in Christ and now every good and right thing, that, that activity that He would do is now available to be done with Him living in you and you in Him. This deep theology doesn't lead to passive inactivity. But if the truth is known and believed, and that is a gift of the Spirit, such faith is active and living out all kinds of good in the world because that's what Jesus is always doing and you are with Him now. So how can you know what good things He will do through you? Ah, His Word in the Bible. And you can ask Him in prayer this is what the Christian life is, a prayerful, scriptural-led life in which the love and goodness of God is given to your neighbor through you by Jesus, because that's what Jesus is doing in the world. Okay, everybody out of the pool, dry off and see if it made sense. And if it didn't, try listening again. And if it's still a mystery and confusing, send me an email, give me a call. Let us, let's set up a time and appointment if you need just to talk about it because it's that important. Hope then to see you all this weekend in Bible study and worship.